Hey everybody, the Sneaky Snake here with Brothers in Arms World of Warships, and today we're going to take a look at the Tier 8 U.S. battleship, the North Carolina. The North Carolina here at Tier 8 represents a transitional phase in the U.S. battleship tech tree. You take a lot of the qualities from the older U.S. battleships, being good AA and good brawling capabilities, and you infuse them with new and foreign things that the Japanese get, like good range on your guns and a fast top speed. The North Carolina takes all of those things and puts it into one complete package. Let's take a closer look. So what exactly do we have here with the Tier 8 North Carolina? Well, it's quite a departure from the old and slow standard type battleships that you experience from Tier 3 in the South Carolina all the way to Tier 7 with the Colorado. This is the first jack-of-all-trades kind of battleship that you get in the U.S. line, and it's the first battleship where the skill cap and the ceiling is significantly higher than the other ones. You take all the old qualities that you get with the U.S. battleships, and you infuse them with new and different ones to get kind of a overall more complete battleship, and one that is able to stand up to its peers much better than the ones before. That being a Tier 8, the Amagi for the Japanese, and the Premium Tirpitz for the Germans. These ships, if you play them correctly, help you lead into the late tier battleship gameplay, which includes the tier 9 Iowa and the tier 10 Montana. The transition is rough, however, but if you can master it, this ship will reward you for it. We're going to take a look at the statistics, the equipment and consumables, the captain skills, and then I have two healthy doses of gameplay. Let's begin. Survivability. A rating of 82, fully upgraded 66,000 hit points, armor 19 to 305 millimeters. It's still the battleship with the least amount of hit points tier for tier, however it has finally caught up to the Japanese in that important area of hit points, with the fully upgraded Amagi having 66,300. It's a sigh and a breath of fresh air for, I'd say, any battleship player that makes it this far on the American side, considering that the previous tier ship Colorado, for example, had an almost 15,000 hit point disparity between it and the Nagato, and other significant disparities between the other tier for tier battleships further on back in the lines. So, that's a really nice thing to have. Plus, this thing's armor is actually pretty good when bow in. And due to the fact that it has both of the forward turrets with three guns, it is a very good offensive ship, and it still has that nice brawling capability. The prowl on this thing is able to bounce shells all day, as long as you keep it directly at them, or slightly angled, maybe 5 to 10 degrees. You'll notice it in-game, and it's really nice. Artillery. The ship has three turrets, two for the bridge and one aft, Three guns apiece, with the forward pair being super firing, a total of nine 406mm guns, the secondary armament 20 127mm guns, and a main battery firing range when fully upgraded of 23.3 kilometers. The North Carolina has, yes, you're going to hear this right, the longest firing distance of any battleship at Tier 8. This is something that's completely un-American, and is one of the first things that changes drastically with this ship, compared to its previous ones. This thing can actually fire out to that range. However, the accuracy is, well, it's a lot left to be desired. This thing is about 50 to 55 meters dispersion worse off than the Colorado, and the Colorado used to be notorious for having terrible accuracy in the beta and the early stages of the release. These guns can best be described as moody, very moody. Sometimes you'll be straddling targets from 12 kilometers all day and not getting a single hit, and other times you'll be slinging shells from 20 kilometers and hitting the citadels. It's just depending on the, the RNG of the day, really. That's the only thing that can be said. However, this clip right here shows what can happen if RNG does go your way. Yeah, that's going to leave a mark. Damaged. AA defense. The North Carolina is second to none at tier 8 when it comes to AA. This thing is littered from stem to stern with the 20mm Orlikin, 40mm Bofors, and 127mm dual purpose guns. This thing has a rating on my captain of a 97. However, you can get this to 100 if you're able to stack on the second tier 4 perk which improves your secondary AA rating. This thing is fantastic, and equal or lower tier carriers have a very very hard time doing any significant damage to the ship. The only way that they would be able to do anything is to mass literally their entire air fleet against you, but you can still beat it off, assuming you have cruiser support. This thing will struggle against higher tier carriers, as it should, but it will still be able to do well, and having games where you shoot down 20, 30, even 40 aircraft is not uncommon. This thing is very, very good in the AA department, and it's a hallmark of all the American ships up to this tier, so this shouldn't be any of a surprise. Maneuverability. The ship's maximum speed when fully upgraded is 27.5 knots and is the second big jump that you make coming up here to tier 8. 
This thing will feel like you're cruising around in a freaking race car around the oceans, going to the objectives and being at the critical contention points, and it's honestly a very big breath of fresh air for the American battleships. The turning circle and rudder shift time, 760 meters and 17.3 seconds respectively, is all right. These things are generally known to have more maneuverability than their Japanese counterparts, and again, it's the same here at Tier 8. However, this thing doesn't turn as fast as the earlier battleships that you've grown accustomed to. However, that's okay, because having that much greater top speed is so nice, and heck, even stock, this thing has a top speed of around 24 knots, which is still just, it'll feel so much nicer. And I think I can speak for everybody here watching that playing the American battleships at the lower tiers is very frustrating when you have to get back to the cap or go capture the base, and you're just you're too slow to make it there. You're not able to get there fast enough. This thing, not as big of a problem, and it's really, really nice. Concealment. This thing actually has a really sneaky good concealment rating, and it is something that I think every player that is playing from this ship on should really take into consideration. The American battleships have always been able to outspot their Japanese contemporaries by a couple kilometers, and the North Carolina is no different when compared to the Amagi. This thing right now, on my captain, has a 14.1 kilometer detectability range. I am not running the captain skill, the tier 5, that gets my detectability down. However, I do have the detectability decrease equipment slot on. And at 14.1 kilometers, there's a lot of things that you can do considering that you have a 30 second reload and the debuff lasts only for 20 seconds. As long as there's no aircraft or DDs in the area, as you'll see in my second clip today, you can really keep the pace of the engagement exactly how you want, and even if you're going up against higher tier ships or more dangerous ships, you can still be able to influence the outcome of the engagement successfully by using the camouflage value of this ship. And I highly, highly suggest to get the tier 5 captain skill, which further reduces the range that you're spotted, both via the sea and the air. Taking a peek at the captain skills now, it's a a pretty general and standard build for tier one situational awareness and basics of survivability. Again, I think those are two very important perks that you should definitely have. And I don't really think there should be a question about it. Artillery expert marksman, get that turret turned just a little bit faster. It does help with the new patch. Vigilance at tier three is also pretty much a must as it lets you detect torpedoes 20% farther out, which is just huge, it's a game changer. Superintendent's never a bad idea, get that extra hull recharge, and get that extra fighter plane or spotting plane, whichever one you prefer. And at tier four, obviously advanced fire training is nice. Again, when I do get my fifth point for the captain, I'm probably gonna take a look into that concealment factor at tier five, it's fantastic, and it'll really help this ship out. For the consumables, I mean, there isn't really anything you should change. You have your damage control party, your repair party, and you get your fighter plane or your catapult fighter. Go with the fighter plane. You already have the best range for any tier 8. You do not need to be able to shoot out to, I guess it'd be 25, 26 kilometers. The range is plenty enough. Um, as for the repair and the damage control party, if you feel like using the premium version of those, you do get an extra charge. And for the uh, for the repair party, and then for the damage control, you do get it back faster. If you have the 22,500 uh, credits to spend, or if you feel like doing gold, that's up to you. I personally don't. However, I'm a cheapskate. And, well, I can't help myself. And lastly, the equipment loadout, pretty standard for the first two slots, reducing the main battery crit chance, or the chance of it getting completely knocked out, and having the AA increase its range by a factor of 20%, especially with a ship like this that has fantastic AA, being able to damage planes at a further distance is all the much better. For the third and fourth, stuff that helps out your repair party, reducing the chance of fire, flooding, getting your repair control back faster, it all helps out in the end, and it's something that, again, I think that every battleship captain should take with them. And lastly, for the fifth slot, it's a toss-up between the concealment and the vigilance kind of equipment that lets you see torpedoes even further out, planes, detecting ships. Um, again, I go with the concealment because you can do some pretty awesome things having the concealment as low as you can, and it's, again, something that I highly, highly, highly suggest that you put on this ship once you can do so. So, that is the Tier 8 USS North Carolina, otherwise known as the showboat back in her heyday. Now we're going to take a look at some gameplay and see how this beast performs in some action. Alrighty, so, first clip of gameplay. We are on the map trap in a standard domination game. I skipped forward a little bit ahead of the start of the game to get a little closer to the action. So, we're heading down here to 
the southern part of the map, hit the objective A. We're here with the Miyoko Japanese cruiser, myself, there's Mikhail Kutuzov, Hachuharu, a Cleveland, plenty of ships over here. We have a couple ships that are already inside the B cap, and it looks like, based off the minimap, that the majority of the enemy team is coming down this way. So we're going to be in for quite the fight. Getting some shots out at the Otago. You can see uh, already the dispersion, even at 12 kilometers, 13 kilometers, is it's, it's not the best. And I consider myself a pretty decent shot. However, you'll, you'll see some pretty head-scratching uh, dispersions in this, uh, in this game. It's a pretty good game, though, but it, it definitely will be interesting. So, the Otago is now turning back in to the cap, presenting a broadside. Yep, that's a good hit. See the torpedoes way far out there? That's the Vigilance perk, and the uh, Catapult Fighter that I have above me doing its job, spotting those things from a long distance away. Get another shot out with the rear turret. Um, something that I forgot to mention earlier, the rear turret has a very poor broadside uh, capability when you're trying to shoot. You have to turn your ship very much to the side to be able to use it. And kaboom! First blood. Taking care of the Otago. However, plenty more enemy ships are coming this way, and we're about to get stuck into some pretty intense naval combat. At this point, we've captured B. See, the enemy team has captured C. Some torpedoes come out from the left side. Not sure what's over there. Taking a look at the post-battle results screen, it appeared that uh, the Mitsuki was the one that was harassing me over here. Took a big hit. As you may know, the forward and the stern parts of the battleships really aren't armored. Took a full damage hit there from a torpedo. Turpets coming down this way as well. Angled pretty well against him. Turning slightly to the starboard side. His shells all miss. Get the guns reloaded. And and honestly, that's probably the toughest ship that uh, you'll go up against in the North Carolina. Short of a uh, Yamato, obviously, because you can play against tier 10s. Turpets are very, very difficult ships to uh, take care of. Some bounces there on the ass end of the ship. And at the moment, really the only thing that's damaged me uh, is that torpedo from that uh, invisible Mitsuki at the moment. Turn it back in towards the Fuso. He lets out a full broadside at me. Keep turning. Keep turning. Slow down a little bit. The shells fly harmlessly above me. 24,000 damage so far at the moment. Pretty good hit, 8k, 5 hits on the Fuso. And again, you know, that, that's a good shot right there. there there's nothing to be to be uh, ashamed of with that, that dispersion right there. That, that was a good, solid hit. Um, yes, it is a tier 6 battleship I'm going up against. However, you know, can't count those things out. Then a Wild York appears. Starts slinging me with some HE. The Fuso redirects his fire to some of the cruisers that are behind me. And you'll see right here, this York. Over penetration, only one shell hit. You saw there, just the shells just landed everywhere pretty much but the York. And then boom, all of a sudden right behind me, the Mitsuki shows himself. Not a good situation to be in. Very, very worried. He goes off the map. Slinging some more rounds downrange at the York. Playing stupid, presenting a very big, fat, juicy broadside. And the shells just miss. And I'm sure all the Colorado players that played in the beta would be able to <laughs> tell me that that was just annoying. Enemy torpedo bombers, dive bombers come in. Not sure from what, uh, which carrier. There is a Lexington in the game. AA going to work as soon as they came over the island. Three planes already shot down. Torpedo bomber squadron wiped out. AA takes a care now of the bombers. More shots at the York. More over penetrations. Trying to dodge the torpedoes. They run out of steam before they get to me. More planes shot down. And that entire air attack that came over at us ran into the concentrated fire of a bunch of cruisers. Catapult fighter and the AA of this thing. Six planes shot down. Just another day at the office. And again, right here. I'm not, I'm not trying to say that North Carolina has bad guns. 
but it's definitely not a pro of the ship when you have shots like this, and it just it goes everywhere again. Uh, but you heard me give out a bit of a sigh right there, like, oh man, it's just it's something that is it's so upsetting, and you know there's nothing you can do about it. And obviously RNG affects battleships the most, but those kinds of shots right there, again, you know, 12, 13 kilometers, it's just shots that you'd at least expect something to hit. The Miyoko that I'm shooting at finally realizes that he's under my fire, starts turning in. <clears throat> one, sh one shell hits, over penetration. At this point, right behind me, the, uh, the enemy team made a big mistake. Um, that Mikhail Kutuzov behind me is taking the majority of the fire from the York, the Fuso. And once the Miyoko comes around the island himself as well. And that's something. When, when the North Carolina is top tier like this in this game, you cannot leave this ship alone. It's something that will get you into a lot of trouble. And it's something that the enemy team just kind of... They didn't, they didn't really think about. Um, at this point, shooting shots at the Miyoko. He's doing a good job of evading. Most of them have missed. See, there's a whole glutton still of enemy ships behind. However, by this point, my team has not only successfully captured C, and they're now swinging back down to help out. We have a 4-1 to one lead and a pretty hefty point advantage. Mitsuki shows himself. Destroyers are always priority targets if you can get shots on them. Doesn't matter what kind of ship you're in, you must do so. And I get a bunch of hits on the Mitsuki, right? <laughs> it's funny how that works, you know. Can't hit the, the broadside of cruisers playing stupid and uh, get a Mitsuki that's maneuvering around all crazy and stuff and hit six shells on him. So, it, you know, it, again, the, the, the moodiness of these guns is just, honestly, I, I've, I haven't seen a, a battleship like this um, coming up the entire line. Fuso, just coming out of the cap, slowing down, trying to do something, you know, by the time you reach this tier, landing shots when they're going slow and such, really isn't too much of a problem. At this point, all the cruisers are uh, getting up out of here, and this is where, finally, the power of the North Carolina comes into play. So we're dealing with still the destroyer, two cruisers, and a battleship. Somehow the Miyoko forgets I'm here. Six shots out. A couple seconds later. Yeah. You kind of knew that was coming, didn't you? <laughs> And as soon as that happens, let out the rear turret against the York, and uh, yeah, <laughs> it's again, it's I, I don't know, it's ridiculous. Angled badly against the the Fuso there, get a little lucky with the RNG, didn't take as much hits. See torpedoes coming in, start slowing down, pulling hard to the to the port side. Is the torpedo gonna hit? Ugh, very close. Shuts out on the York. Ba boom, another Citadel. Another ship destroyed. Three cruisers so far. We're up to 81,951 damage. And all of a sudden, that Fuso has run out of friends. Got the repair party going. All of a sudden, we're up 400 points. And this Fuso is in a lot of trouble. Start turning bow in. Get some more shots out. That was that was a good engagement right there. Those, uh, those two cruisers paid for the error of their ways. Solid 8,000 point hit there. Fuso's at about two-thirds health. See right there? Getting hit. Took very minimal damage. Being bow in like this. It, I know it's a tier 6. However, you can still successfully do these things. Um, even up against the tier 10 Montana, considering it has the, the same caliber of guns. More torpedoes inbound. No problem. Good, solid meaty hit on the Fuso. Five hits. Another plane shot down. He's down to a quarter health. All those shots bounced. Not a single damaging or penetrating hit. Fuso is about to die from torpedoes. Try to swing my guns around. The rear turret, that is. He dies from fire. Sweet. And now we find the enemy carriers. Try to farm some easy damage. Just cracked 106,000 points worth of damage done. Get some shots out, and as you see, I still have more than half of my health left. Very good brawling, and if ships are not going to take you seriously at close range, you can really make them pay 
And, uh, yeah, those cruisers, that was the biggest mistake right there. They did not attack me and focus their fire. They decided that the Mikhail Kutuzov was a more immediate threat. And, well, I understand you want to destroy the cruiser support before you tackle. But at this point, I was already, you know, swinging around, getting completely stuck in with that group of enemy ships. And it just didn't do them very well. So, again, uh, I've dodged every torpedo except for one. More torps inbound from the Mitsuki. See how far you can evade them. Obviously, again, Catapult Fighter helping out. And the game is about to be over. So, right there. Very good example. Top tier battleship. How you can influence the game. The team is swept in, took care of business. And that is the end of the game. Very, very good. 10 minute round. 10 minute clip, I should say. 120,000 damage. Just over 3,000, uh, no double experience for this. This was just a normal round. 2,001 base, three ships killed, seven planes taken out. Good game. Second game we're going to take a look at here. This is a tier 10 game. And we are on the map Tears of the Desert, the new map that was released with the previous patch, the one right before the upcoming Russian cruisers. And uh, we got a Yamato. We got an Iowa. North Carolina that we already know is coming this way for the enemy team and there will be that second Iowa on their team so the entire weight of their battleship f uh, fleet is coming down here to the H and I lines H1, H2, that area. So this is going to be a very interesting engagement considering that I and our own Iowa along with a Zao and a Shimakaze will oppose them. So on paper we actually have the advantage with the uh, the Shimakaze being here, and he's going to do a lot of good work, um, as you'll see throughout this clip. Now, the reason why I wanted to put this highlight on here was not necessarily due to the, the huge damage or the crazy amount of kills, but you'll notice when I shoot here, I'm detected again. So in between the time of my first shots that all missed and this one, I was able to go out of the detection range. That 14.1 kilometer detection range on this thing, at least with the setup that I have, is fantastic. Another salvo misses. However, um, it it really gives you a lot of options, especially against higher tier ships, because the uh, the Azumo at tier nine and the Yamato tier ten have crazy high detectability ranges, and really that's your only wild card that you can pull when trying to uh, engage them, is that you're able to spot them before you, and at least in this circumstances, uh, if they're far enough away, you can keep popping in and out of detectability. It'll really help your cause. Some more shots at the Iowa. I finally registered my first hit for 4.4 thousand. Nothing special. He's starting to come under the uh, the concentrated fire of my teammates. Another 4K hit. But I'm always uh, worried about that Yamato. Now, our friendly Iowa decides to go flying forward. Don't know if it was the right play. <laughs> Clearly, by his hit points pull, it certainly doesn't seem like it at the moment. He's becoming the uh, the focus of fire for the Yamato, and it appears all the other ships over there as well. However, the enemy Iowa is also in a bit of a, a bit of a pickle too. Uh, getting burned to death by the Zhao, the Shimakaze stalking, trying to get a good angle for a torpedo attack. So he's definitely in a world of hurt at the moment. Unfortunately our Iowa that went flying forward is dead. So now it's me versus the three battleships, hoping that the Zhao and the Shimakaze to my port side are able to do some good work while I try to grab their attention. Shimakaze releases some torpedoes. And again, these are these shots obviously aren't going to do much damage, especially against the Amano, but I'm just trying to, to get their attention onto me. Uh, the Iowa, taking more damage from the Zhao, starts turning broadside. Probably seen that Shimakaze, or at least got wind of them. Shots out. Bubble. Citadel, 10k damage, Iowa's taken care of. So, we got a kill, sweet. 26,000 damage, not too much, but got to whittle them down slowly and steadily. Just look at that wall of torpedoes that Shimakaze can can just release, it's crazy. <laughs> I, I, I'm at the Hatsuharu right now, and um, I'll eventually get there, and geez, that, that's got to be some scary stuff. Friendly Fubuki ends up making his way down here too, so... Um, now, it's it's an interesting engagement because the only guys that they see right now is the Zhao. 
decided to reload some HE shells here. I'm going to start targeting the Yamato. But uh, at the moment, yeah, our, our destroyers are doing a good job here. And again, i got to credit those guys a lot for helping me out, being able to include this clip in this review due to their uh, good play, causing the enemy battleships to, uh, to make some interesting decisions. Uh, unfortunately, this salvo, as soon as I shot, I knew it was going to be off. However, again, you see that I got detected again. I was able to go from turned away from them to being able to swing the ship all the way around and change the angle of attack. And now that Yamato isn't able to get quality shots of me because he has to deal with more torpedoes that are incoming. So I was able to get myself back into a more advantageous position without risking the hit points on my ship. Right there at the end, get spotted. Some shots out. Blind fire from the enemy team. They don't really do much damage at all. Take one hit. About a thousand damage. Get some more shots at the Yamato. Again, I'm detected. Um, and, oh, mama. That North Carolina took some nasty hits. Now, here's where I made really my only big mistake of the game. I was not paying attention to the Yamato. Somehow, I, I no idea. That that Yamato should have absolutely destroyed me. And, and uh, yeah, <laughs> just a little bit high for him. Or I would have been absolutely nuked off the face of the, the Earth. Destroyers, again, doing a great job. Getting that North Carolina to turn broadside. I thought I had the shot. Just the same thing as the uh, Yamato. Just a little too high. Still a good 11,000 damaging shot. Enemy Zao appears and an Otago. So now I'm starting to take the fire. And this is what the cruisers in the last game uh, that I previewed on here should have done. Focusing fire on me. However, once again, I go outside of the detection range. And it's... Yeah, I know the RNG on the ship is a little... Ridiculous sometimes shooting at long distances, but look at those shells. Totally taking a guess. Had no idea. Gets spotted again. The Otago's right near that 14 kilometer. However, Shimakaze and the Fubuki make a fantastic play. Get that Damario to turn broadside to me. He takes a couple torpedo hits. Boom. That kill was on them. And that happens to be the first Yumano that I have uh, been able to sink in this game. Sitting at 53,000 damage. Two kills, tier 9 and 10 battleship. Still have a decent bit of hit points left. And that North Carolina is in a world of hurt. Quite the engagement there, I must say. Those uh, destroyers were rock stars for us. The game's still tied, though. Both at 401 points, so... Uh, it's It's been a pretty good game so far. Unfortunately, with this salvo, I didn't take into account uh, that when they're turning into you like that, they get just a little bit closer, even if you're pulling away from them. All the shells just get all above them. That was a, that's a shot that you got to make, and one that I normally do. However, shoots some high explosive back at me. Turning to avoid. Go out of detection range once again. A couple shells hit. About 2,000 damage. Nothing too crazy. Take some more hits from the Otago. Pretty good salvo from him, about 3,000. Sitting broadside. Shots out. 15 and a half kilometers. And once again, there's the there's the uh, the peculiar RNG on this thing. And um, you know, you got to take the shot. You know, he's presenting the broadside to you, but it's unfortunate. However, once again, go out of detection range. And this is something that just quite simply an Amagi or uh, an Azumo just they they couldn't do. They could not be sitting here uh, coming in and out of detection. I just just couldn't do it because their detection ranges are up near 20 kilometers. Some of those ships, which is just uh, it's insane, and you you really have no way of you know controlling the engagement like that at all. However, due to the help from the Japanese destroyers on our team, I have been able to for the most part control the pace of the engagement. Still in a pretty good battle here. That Otago's got a turn. I learned my lesson. From the previous salvo at the North Carolina. Let out another one against the Otago. Turns in slightly. Bubble. Enemy Otago taken care of. Shoot the rear turrets at the North Carolina. Once again, I don't lead him enough. He's having a, a, a bit of an issue here in this game with uh, my, my shots for some reason. Try to get some more shots at him right before he goes behind the island. More shots downrange. Pretty good grouping. Those four in the center there look pretty tasty. 
We'll see if we get rewarded for it. Four hits and only 4,000 damage. So in that uh, roughly nine minute engagement there, eight minute engagement, 68,000 damage, three ships destroyed, three citadels and one plane to boot, a Yamato in Iowa taken out of the game, and the enemy cruiser, the Otago. Alrighty, folks. Well, there you have it. That is the Tier 8 North Carolina Battleship review, gameplay, and commentary for you. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please consider giving it a like or a comment down at the bottom. This is the first review that I've done, so any tips, suggestions, or anything that you'd like to give to me, please do so. It'll help out the channel a lot, improve the quality. So again, thank you very much for taking your time to check this video out. Enjoy the content that we will be coming up in the coming weeks. We got some really good stuff. Everybody, have a good day. The Sneaky Snake out.